Chapter 81 Misfortune comes out of the mouth you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 81 Misfortune comes from the mouth the dot candy wave is the liquid syrup that Perispero wants to use to tie Quinn and the others down before taking the bananas away. Unfortunately, when he secretly used his ability, Quinn was also secretly using his ability, and Perispero's direction was backlit, which became his biggest foreshadowing. The power of sunlight is collected into the body through the leaves on the back. It belongs to the great trick of grass. Type Pokemon, Sunlight Flame. Needs to be charged before attacking, and is affected by weather conditions, but if it is released successfully, the power is quite impressive. Although it is a grass. Type skill, as an attack released by absorbing the power of the sun, it has a high temperature in itself. Devil fruit is an unscientific thing but it follows strange rules. The candy made by licking the fruit is as hard as steel, but it is afraid of high temperature. The high temperature generated by the explosion of the energy ball was able to be defended by Perispero, but the high temperature continuously generated by the sunshine flame was different. The wave of candy he released was directly evaporated by the attack of the sunshine flame. The pirates beside Perro's Parapello looked at the incoming sunshine flame and wanted to escape, but their bodies became particularly heavy, and they could only watch the sunshine flame getting closer. Although Perispero held up the candy defense for defense, the moment the candy wall came into contact with the sunshine flames, it was melted by the high temperature attached to it, and the original defense power disappeared, and the group was directly hit by Quinn's sunshine flames blasted out. Perispero is only 19 years old this year. Although he has eaten the licking fruit, his strength is still growing. And although he is the eldest son, his fighting power is not the strongest. The 25.year.old Quinn has developed more comprehensively, and the sunshine flame after charging has restrained the fruit ability, and it is not surprising that he has an advantage. It's just that he still lost some bananas. He didn't want to, but he had no choice. He refused to compromise with Perispero. It was his thing. If someone wanted to take it away, he would not let the other party succeed even if he destroyed it. Ednell.co can only minimize this loss as much as possible. Perispero's people were all attacked by Quinn's flames of sunshine, not because they didn't want to dodge, but because they couldn't dodge when their bodies slowed down. At this time, there was a sweet smell in the air. This was neither the fragrance of ripe bananas nor the fragrance of Perispero candies, but the sweet smell released by Quinn, which could reduce the enemy's evasion. Probabilistic skills. The real effect is that the aroma contains special toxins that can dull the body. Mumhaha, this is the end of stealing Uncle Ben's things. You know how powerful your Uncle Quinn is. What kind of woman is Shayna? If uncle I hadn't let her, would she be my opponent? It seemed that the topic was not quite right, Quinn found a sense of satisfaction in Perispero, and suddenly there was a sense of self-confidence. That, big brother Quinn, what are you doing, what are you idiots doing? Hurry up and tie them up, and then go to harvest the bananas, this place can't stay, it needs to be changed. Although he successfully cultivated the first batch of bananas here, but big MOM people also discovered this place. It is a certain distance from the territory of the beasts, and the strategic value is not high, and the occupation is of little significance. So he decided to build a bigger plantation somewhere else. No, big brother Quinn, isn't it a good thing for you to talk about big sister's head behind your back? Ha, huh, behind. Even in person, I dare say it. It's just a woman. He took out a cigar and planned to relax. During this process, he kept staring in the direction of Perispero. After all, he was the eldest son of the Charlotte family. Even if he was restrained, he would not be weak enough to be instantly killed by a single blow. Just as he was looking for fire, a flaming finger was placed in front of him. Quinn didn't think anything was wrong, he lit the cigar directly, but after a delay of tenths of a second, he felt that the hand looked a little familiar. You are very confident, very good, very energetic, what happened to my woman, I want to hear your comments. Guru. 
Quinn swallowed and turned her head stiffly. Then his eyes almost popped out. Why are you here? In Quinn's sight was Shayna, who was flying low in the air. Wasn't it Shayna's hand who lit the cigar just now? An ominous premonition came to her mind. The day is long over. But no matter what you think, Shayna shouldn't be here. You shouldn't have run so far. Just to hit me. No, Lord Holy Beast is going to hunt for treasure, I'm just accompanying him. I just happened to pass by here, and the destination is nearby. They were planning to resupply here and then set off. Just as there was news of a battle here, Shayna came over to see what happened. Call me. But now I have changed my mind. We originally planned to rest here for a while. I think you are quite confident. Let's start in a while. Wait. You heard it wrong, I didn't say anything, ask them if you don't believe me. Quinn pointed to the younger brother behind him, and Shayna followed, and the pressure shifted to them all at once. After a few tenths of a second of hesitation, they sold Quinn without hesitation. Shayna had come a long time ago, but Quinn didn't notice it. Their veto would not change the outcome, and they could only get burned. Sorry, big brother Quinn. Line up, bow, apologize, stay away. His little brothers explained everything with the actual situation, the matter is a foregone conclusion, and they did not want to offend the disciplinary committee members in the pirate group. You cowards. Although he is not qualified to say this, it does not affect dissing them in his heart. Well, I think it's more important to solve the enemy first. He very much hoped that Perispero would not lose his combat effectiveness, so that he could achieve the transfer of contradictions. And Perispero didn't let him down, he stood up again, and he also had a few pirates who hadn't fallen yet. Quinn didn't get a bounty because he didn't have a chance to play during this period of time, and he was also used as a background board by Wald in the last Battle of Wald, so he has not been rewarded, but Shayna is different. She and Jin have been fighting almost all the time, and her own name has already been made. Lord Perispero, that woman is Yen Zha Ji, and their reinforcements seem to have arrived. I'm not blind yet. Prepare to retreat. But Mom sighed. There's no other way, just tell the truth about what's going on here. Mom should be able to understand hope. He didn't quite believe it himself, but he could only comfort himself like this. End of this chapter. Chapter 82. Quinn Bowling Combination You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 82 Quinn Bowling Combination Shayna's reputation in the territory is not bad. The disciplinary committee of the Hundred Beasts not only follows the rules set by Archaeus and Aesi, but also maintains the discipline within the Beast Pirates. This makes the residents of the territory have a good sense of her. Although ordinary pirates are a little afraid, they are more in awe. As long as they don't step on the red line, Shayna is a very good elder sister, and she is completely resistant in battle. A head, gnawing at the hardest bone. But to outsiders, what she left behind is a completely murderous name, Yenclaw Princess, the Princess of Fire Claw, I don't know how many pirates of hostile forces have died under her flaming claws. Because she has been in human.beast form for a long time, her half.beast.like hands and feet helped her get such a name. A Quinn has already made Perispero difficult, and with a Shayna, they are no match. It's just that it's not that easy to retreat. Nowadays, many people are reluctant to fight the people of the beast pirates on the sea, because they have the ability to fly from captain to cadre. Flying and staying in the air have the same purpose, but their meanings are completely different. The means of staying in the air for a short period of time are not comparable to the natural flight ability. The sea ships are their only foothold. Unless it is an aquatic race like a murloc, falling into the sea is a weakening of the combat power of any pirate. Even if they are not capable, the resistance of the sea will affect their strength, and the advantage of air dominance is fully exerted by the beast pirates. In the face of an opponent who can fly, it is not so easy to get away, and Perispero's ability is also overpowered by Shayna. 
Quinn is just a skill with continuous high temperature, and all of Shayna's attacks are accompanied by fierce flames. Their physical skills are not at the same level. When the ability to lick the fruit is completely ineffective, Perispero will be very powerless in the face of the enemy. But sometimes things get weird, and when Shayna wanted to do something, someone who was holding her back showed up. She was beaten by Shayna, no, it was because she had friendly exchanges with Shayna so many times. Quinn knew very well about Shayna's attack methods. Flames overflowed from the corner of her mouth. He had already seen Shayna's next plan. What is? According to the past habit, it's just that she will use the big character Pyroblast. Is there a skill table to limit the number of skills? Of course, she knows a lot of skills. It's okay to use the big character Pyroblast at sea. The problem is that this is his banana garden. Quinn pondered the consequences of Shayna's large dot character pyrotechnic explosion. He didn't know whether Perispero was dead or not, but his bananas were definitely not saved. No, stop it. His body reacted first, directly hugging one of Shayna's legs, which made Shayna lose her balance in a low dot flying state, and the large dot character pyrotechnic release failed. What are you doing, bastard? Shayna stepped on Quinn's face with another leg. Although there was no flame attached, it also caused Quinn's face to deform on a small scale. Let me go, are you going to join the enemy? Shayna knew that Quinn couldn't do this, because this guy was a bit bullying, not to mention that he couldn't beat himself, knowing that Arceus was nearby, he couldn't be stupid enough to join the enemy. But aside from the word, she couldn't figure out what was wrong with Quinn for a while. No, listen to me and analyze it carefully, it's actually not bad to let them go. What nonsense are you talking about? Think about it carefully, they are from Big M.O.M., Big Brother Kai and Big Mom seem to have some relationship, so it's not good for us to kill them directly. If you catch them, you have to spend time watching them, which will delay the treasure hunt of Lord Arceus, isn't it bad? Why don't we let them go directly? which will save the time of Brother Kai and Lord Arceus, don't you think it makes sense? Quinn said that I was thinking for you, and used the reason of serving Arceus, but although Shayna mainly focuses on Arceus and prioritizes his affairs, it does not mean that Arceus is mentioned about her intelligence. We'll return to zero. Do you think I'm a fool? Then they come back with more people, you are definitely not their opponent, and the final result is not the same. It's not the same, so I have enough time to transfer the bananas away. If you do it, this banana forest will be finished. Quine said what was in her heart, which also changed Shayna's expression. You bastard. Forget it. Okay, so I'll change to a milder attack method. I remember that your armament color has been trained well recently. You better hope that your armament color is strong enough. Wait. What are you doing? Quinn had an ominous premonition, but Shayna ignored him. The waist is the fulcrum, and the leg muscles begin to exert force. Quinn is a weight dot bearing leggings for her, which does not affect her movement at all, and then kicks with Quinn in the air. Quinn was kicked out by Shayna before she could react. Quinn bowling. She decided to name this move after Quinn, after all, Quinn is the main body of the attack. Originally, Perispero and the others were hurrying to retreat because of the strange infighting on the side of the beasts, but it was obviously impossible to get away from here in such a short time. Quinn's body was really like a bowling ball, and he slammed into Perispero and the others. Perispero tried to use candy to stop the human bowling ball from approaching. He thought it was a special combination of Quinn and Shayna but the ballistic he made with the candy was melted by the high. Temperature flame released by Shayna in an instant. Looking at Quinn getting closer, he had to take care of himself first. Candy Armor The armor made of candy wrapped around Perispero's body and made him more like a bowling pin. Quinn's body took up a lot of space, and Shayna, who was still far away, rushed over in an instant kicked the surrounding pirates into Quinn's trajectory one by one. Under the impact of Quinn's bowling ball, 
all the members of Big MOM were knocked flying or crushed to the ground. Shayna played a total down record, and then kicked Perispero unconsciously, ending this time. Fighting In this battle, Perispero's side was completely destroyed. One of the beasts was in a coma and one was injured. The reason for the coma was that Perispero's candy caused him to lack oxygen, and the reason for the injury was the accidental injury of the friendly troops. This strange way of fighting made the boys around him stunned, and someone asked another outrageous question. The eldest sister kicked her head out with her feet. Can a kick with her feet be called bowling? Shouldn't it be better to call it a shot? End of this chapter. Chapter 83 Paradox Shift You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 83 Paradox Transfer No one answered this question, whether it was football or bowling, the result was the same, Quinn sat up dizzy, and the armed color that he had trained countless times protected his body. And the bowling attack also prevented his bananas from being baptized by flames. Although he hit a few banana trees, the bananas on them could still be rescued. Quinn felt that his efforts were worth it. What are you guys doing? Hurry up and tie up these guys, then harvest the bananas and dig out the banana seedlings for transplanting. Looking at the younger brothers who were enjoying the bowling performance, Quinn roared and ordered them, and the ball attack did not cause much burden on him. The transformed body is very tenacious, armed with domineering protection to protect the key points, and his body size is similar to that of a ball, so it is not too much of a burden. Of course, a plantation does not have high loose stone handcuffs, but the solution is better than the difficulty. Those pirates dug a pit near the sea. After confirming that it was full of seawater, they buried Perispero in it, leaving only one. The head is outside. In the powerless state, he did not have the ability to break free from the shackles of sand. Wet sand can produce the same effect as quicksand, and the huge adsorption force bound him. Due to the length of his tongue, the salty smell of sea water kept feeding back to his head from the taste buds of his tongue, which made him very miserable as a sweet party. And now Quinn and Shayna are discussing how to deal with Perispero, the big pirates are not just fighting and killing, but human beings. Pirates of the same level will uphold the attitude of not breaking the water in the well until they fall out completely. At this time, Perispero is defeated. If he kills him, it means a complete fallout with Big M.O.M. In view of the unclear relationship between Kaido and Big M.O.M., Quinn hesitated for a while, but he had already ordered the younger brothers to transfer the banana tree overnight, and now there are only a few of them left on the island. As Shayna said, whether Perispero is released or caught, it will be a trouble in the end, and the level of trouble depends on the thoughts of Kaido and Charlotte Lingling. Master Arceus, why don't you give us some advice? Quinn, who didn't know how to deal with it for a while, pushed the question to Arceus, and just after he finished asking, he received a punch from Shayna. Don't cause trouble to the holy beast, if you didn't put the plantation in this place, would there be a lot of trouble? Although she used Quinn's bowling ball, she still had a strong resentment for Quinn's behavior. Soon after, the phone bug on Perispero rang, and the ringing also woke up Perispero, who was in a coma. He just opened his eyes and saw Quinn being hammered. And the sound of the ringing phone bug made Quinn react to a question. No, it's him who is making trouble. Why are you beating me? Go and beat him. This is called nearby accountability. The trouble he brought is reflected on you, and indirectly caused me trouble, so I only look for problems from you, and your problems with him are your business. Because she has been a disciplinary committee member for a long time, Shayna is very familiar with some of the rules arranged by Arceus, and even has a little creative ability with herself, so she detoured Quinn in a few words. Hey. You don't want to anger Big M.O.M. If you don't want to, just bring me the phone bug. Buried in the ground, Perispero shouted at Quinn, he was not a threat, but he was really worried that Auntie would be angry. If she didn't go back by the specified time, Auntie would definitely find out that something went wrong. But Perispero was not happy, because after Big Mom found out that he failed, 
he would be punished severely. The ideal situation is for the people in front of you to compromise and let him take the things back. As for the injured and dead pirates, and he won't care about this kind of thing. As long as he doesn't say anything, there will be no problem. As the eldest son, he knows best what an angry aunt looks like, especially if she fails to bring back the food she wants, once bad luck catches up with aunt's cravings. Thinking of that situation, Perispero almost trembled. Unfortunately, things didn't develop as he expected. Although the phone bug brought it, it didn't give it to him directly, but was placed in front of him by Shayna. What do you mean? Find a way to answer the phone yourself, I think your tongue should be able to do that. Saying that, he plans to leave. This is the solution that Quinn came up with when he was unilaterally beaten. Since this matter is so troublesome, let Kaido handle it alone. They just need to continue to do their own thing. As long as this trouble is not your own, it is not called trouble. After putting down the phone bug, Shayna and the others left directly, leaving only a group of pirates buried under the sand. The phone bug kept ringing, and Perispero worked hard and finally licked the receiver off. Brother Peros, why haven't you come back yet? Mom is already angry. Hearing the voice of his younger brother and sister on the other end of the phone, Peros Pero breathed a sigh of relief, but the next moment, the voice of his aunt made him nervous again. Perispero, why haven't you come back yet? Didn't you say it would only take a few hours? Although the phone bug is the same as the phone, it has the effect of a video call. The phone bug's imitation ability allows the person on the other side to clearly know who is answering the phone here. The phone bug that turned into an ant made Perispero almost bite his tongue. No, mom, listen to me, it's just an accident, I've encountered a special situation. No need to explain. Those who fail will be punished, but I'll talk about this later. I'll go to you now. A busy tone came from the other side of the phone bug, and Perispero's face turned pale, he felt that his life had lost its future. At the same time, Quinn's face was also pale, looking at the phone bug in his hand, the opposite was Kaido. Through the contradiction transfer method, this contradiction was thrown to Kaido. Although it caused him some trouble, it was nothing compared to the trouble he caused after drinking. It's just that the important task of informing Kaido was handed over to Quinn. Kaido didn't say anything else, but only informed Quinn that when he returned, he would help him strengthen his training in armament. As his cadre, Quinn's combat power is somewhat behind. He felt that going back now would inevitably lead to misfortune, so he asked to join Arceus treasure hunt team first, and planned to go back after a while. In terms of Kaido's character, there is a high probability that he would forget about it after a meal. End of this chapter Chapter 84 Motherfucker's son you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 84 After Quinn followed Arceus and the others out of here, Perispero and the others were unable to break free from the sea sand. For ordinary pirates, the submerged sea sand was too heavy to exert force at all. For Perispero, the water above is what confines them, and Perispero was dug up until other members of Big MOM came here. Brother Peros. Compert, it's you who's here, isn't mom going to come over in person? Charlotte Compert, the eldest daughter of the Charlotte family, saw that it was Compalt, Perispero was slightly relieved, not Charlotte Lingling, at least that meant her anger was still there within control. Mom is still very angry, but Brother Peros, don't worry too much, the punishment for you this time shouldn't be too severe, probably, what's wrong? Mom wanted to come over in person, but she called someone before, and this matter may not be handled by us anymore. And now Totland has my mother's guests, so my mother didn't come in person, but I couldn't bring back the bananas my mother asked for, and the punishment was definitely inevitable. Perispero sat on the ground with a headache. It would not be too serious, meaning that he would not be drawn from lifespan, but it was hard to say what the specific punishment would be. Lord Perispero, they didn't actually take all the bananas. After these people returned from the banana forest, they brought back a mood that made Perispero slightly happy. 
It was the bananas that had been affected in the previous battle. Some had their skins burned black, some were cut by candy pieces, and some were crushed. After loading all the bananas and banana seedlings on the ship, the cargo space of the ship is already full, and the prisoners and other pirates have to be taken away, so these bad fruits are thrown here. Looking at these bad results, Perispero's heart is very complicated. Charlotte Lingling's anger is partly related to what she eats, and it's easy to calm her anger and find what she needs to eat, but these are all bad results. Compart, you're willing to help me, right? Brother Peros, what are you going to do? Compared to their mother, the siblings of the Charlotte family are more united, especially when the big mother has an episode of eczema. Not everyone in the Charlotte family is good at cooking, especially their sons, but the daughters of the Charlotte family have some desserts that they are good at. Compete is good at making candied fruit, cooking chopped fruit, adding sweet spices and mixing it with syrup to eat. In the past, this was a way to preserve fruit, that is, canned fruit. Depending on the cooking time and the amount of added sugar, the dishes you can get are also different. Looking at Perispero's gaze, Compart seemed to understand what he wanted to do. Brother Peros, don't you think, ah, cut off the bad parts, then process it and bring it back to mom. You never know what kind of environment and what materials you eat. As long as it tastes delicious and the thing is not stabbed out, it is not a big deal. Ant really doesn't pay much attention to food hygiene and safety. Hormi Eyes, who is infused with soul, runs around every day in various places, and when she has an eating disorder, she will directly eat the house made of food. I have never heard of it. She has a bad belly. As for why he failed in bananas, he just had to explain that he grabbed it in the previous battle, and when faced with food, Big Mom's intelligence would plummet. Whether to fool his mother or expose Perispero, Compert chose the former, this kind of thing really doesn't count, as long as they don't say it, no one will know. Only the people who came with Perispero knew about it. The people who came with Compart were not here, and Perispero was not worried about them going to report. You all know your mother's character. If I am punished, you are likely to lose your life. If you want to live, you should honestly work according to Compert's instructions. As for reporting to your mother, I believe you will not do such stupid things. Of. Lord Perispero, don't worry, we know very well, the big MOM pirates have no claim that their merits and demerits are equal. At most, they have changed from plundering 50 years of life to 40 years of plundering. Even if they do nothing, they will definitely be punished when they go back. The pirate ship of Perispero is fine. After simple processing, they got a lot of bananas that looked no problem. Although they were not fully ripe yet, they were just right for this kind of place. The fruit ability of Perispero can provide a lot of high dot quality syrup, although this will make some people feel too sweet, but it does not have a great impact on the ant. After processing, they got a big pot of candied fruit, the main ingredient is those bananas, and the ingredients are other fruits. None of these ingredients is a big problem, but I have encountered some minor misfortunes before, so Compert didn't mind and tried it himself. This flavor. No wonder mom is so interested, but brother Peros, if mom is addicted to this flavor and continues to ask us to find this banana in the future, what should we do? Let's talk about it when the time comes. Let's close this one in front of us first. The east wall was demolished to make up for the west wall. As for what to do with the east wall, he didn't have time to think about it right now. Let's talk about saving the west wall first. With an uneasy mood, Perispero and Compart set foot on the boat back to Totland. Not long ago, the main island of Totland Kingdom. Cake Island. The big MOM pirates returned here after the last time the eating disorder was over. Perispero was unable to bring back the bananas within the allotted time, and the others did not find a substitute for the bananas. They tried all kinds of bananas in Totland, but they couldn't reach the sweetness of this banana, and that banana also contained the sweetness of other fruits, and it was cleverly blended together. This challenged Auntie's patience to a certain extent. 
She originally wanted to come to Perispero in person, but Kaido's call came directly, you mean, that island is yours. That's right, Lingling, it's not appropriate for your people to invade my territory. Well well Kaido looks like you've been doing pretty well recently, but I'm very interested in that thing. But that's my little brother's stuff. If he doesn't agree, you can't take it away. Looks like we can't fix this on the phone. Don't worry, I'm already here. Said Kaido hung up the phone, and Auntie also heard the noise from outside the gate. Mom. It's not good, something is coming. End of this chapter. Chapter 85 The Middleman Who Made Capital Cry Kaido you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 85 The Middleman Who Makes Capital Cry Kaido the Cyan Dragon was flying over Cake Island. The residents of Cake Island and Homais were all taken aback by the sudden appearance. Charlotte Lingling, who walked out of the gate, looked at Kaido in the sky, and a trace appeared on the corner of her mouth. Special smile. Well well, when the little brother grew up, he wasn't cute at all. Kaido's fruits are all given by her, of course she can recognize Kaido after beastization. And the reason why Kaido is here is that he doesn't want his territory to be affected. Charlotte Ringling is a lunatic sometimes, and Kaido knows that. But it was something that Quinn planted. He knew that Quinn had been busy planting these things for a long time. Since Quinn didn't want to take it out, no one could rob it. In order to prevent Charlotte Lingling from destroying his territory, he went directly to Cake Island, intending to make things clear here, so that even if the fight broke out, it would be Charlotte Lingling's territory, and his own territory would be safe. Seven years, no, it's been almost eight years, and Kaido hasn't been seen for almost eight years. I didn't expect you to come to me because of such a thing. John's land has been robbed by you, and the treasure must have also fallen. Do you have it? What are you talking about, I didn't find John at all, I just grabbed the land. Whoever regards Kaido as Hanin is the real Hanin. This guy is a ghost and a ghost. Anyone who asks about Captain John can't tell him. That is the current financial code of the Beast Pirates. Many of the policies formulated by Ashier are very expensive in the early stage, but they are all maintained by those treasures. Even if you are short of money now, you can go there to get them. Well well, is that right? Then John was really unlucky, and actually died of civil strife, but you are here, just let us have a good talk. After seven or eight years, the two big pirates met again because of some bananas. Kaido is obviously here to talk. If you can talk, it means that it is not impossible, but that it requires a certain price. Since it's your territory, then I'll pay for it, and the bananas will be sent to me every year. That's impossible, Lingling. At most, it will give you a part after the production expansion, and I have no interest in things like money. To be precise, he can only get some money by selling bananas. He is not interested in this kind of thing at all. He is here as a middleman. If Charlotte Lingling wanted to forcefully grab it, he would never agree to it. He had always had a good attitude towards the younger brother he liked, and he could not choose to compromise just because the other party was Charlotte Lingling. But the trade is different. Quinn has a limit even if he can eat it, but the banana planting range is not. As the range expands, he will naturally have extra bananas that he can sell to Charlotte Lingling. But this kind of banana is only available to him. He is in a monopoly position and will not be satisfied with those baileys. What he wants is Charlotte Lingling's intelligence network. The big pirates have their own intelligence network. If they rely on newspapers, they will be killed by that guy from Morgan sooner or later. He really dared to report any major events, but he did not less to report fake news for the sake of bloggers' attention. Among the many pirates in the New World, Charlotte Lingling is the closest to the Grey World. She needs all kinds of high-dot-quality ingredients, as well as collecting people or other creatures of various races to all countries, which requires information from the underground world. Network And he just wanted to collect information on those slates through Charlotte Lingling's intelligence network, 
and he used the slates to exchange powerful abilities with Arceus. And at Charlotte Lingling, who pays with fruit, this middleman can say that his hands are numb. Borrowing the intelligence network was not a big deal for Charlotte Lingling, Kaido bet she would not refuse. Intelligence network. What are you looking for those things for? This has nothing to do with you, you get what you want, I get what I want, why make it so clear? But I need those bananas right now. I don't think I've heard of those things you're looking for, weird, indestructible slabs. If your news is true, it's not negotiable. He wouldn't go and rob Quinn of this kind of thing, but if the news is true, Quinn would choose to compromise, because Shayna would definitely have a cordial and friendly exchange with him after knowing it. In that case, I'll go and find something and then we'll trade, Kaido, I'll give you a face, I only need half of the bananas on that island. Can, dot although Quinn will suffer losses, as long as there are slates, Arceus will definitely not mind helping him make up for this loss. Compared with these second dot generation bananas, the original bananas will taste significantly better. But after Kaido and Charlotte Lingling made a deal, a spoiler appeared. Lingling. Who is that? What are you doing? How can you drink? Charlotte Lingling is a pirate, Kaido is also a pirate, and they are old acquaintances. After reaching a certain deal, it is normal for the two to drink side by side. At this time, Charlotte Lingling was not yet 40 years old. Auntie was completely two people when she was in her 60s and when she was young. After the age of 40.8, her face began to become resolute, but before that, her appearance very beautiful. And it is also the type that Boss Chow likes. As we all know, Charlotte Lingling not only has many children, but also many husbands. The one who questioned Charlotte Lingling is his new husband. At this time, Charlotte Lingling still had a child in her belly, but her pregnancy did not affect her fighting. Her monster's physique was different from that of ordinary people. In a sense, Auntie's first husband was very strong. When her husband saw Charlotte Lingling shrugging shoulders with another young man and drinking, he felt his nerves jump. And Charlotte Lingling's husband often makes the mistake of overestimating his place in Charlotte Lingling's heart. She values dot capable children, but for her, her husband is a tool person, and children are usually abandoned at birth. Her current husband does not know that her term of office is only a few months away. There were still a few months left, but at this time he came out to disturb Charlotte Lingling, which made the pregnant Charlotte Lingling think that he was already a waste in the way. So when he talked about some things and approached the ant, all he got was a ruthless slap in the face, and he became Charlotte Lingling's shortest dot-term husband. End of this chapter. Chapter 86. How to Impersonate an Expert You Are Listening at Novel Full dot Audio. Chapter 86 How to Impersonate an Expert Kaido's Appearance Temporarily Saved Perispero, So Big M.O.M. Didn't Go to Find Him Personally. If Perispero met an angry ant, it would be uncertain what the result would be. Quinn is also worried about his captain's attitude, but compared to Perispero's anxiety, Quinn's mood is more relaxed, the big deal is to be beaten for a few days, isn't it just beaten, he has long been used to it, but it always feels kind of sad to say that. The treasure map was in Olga's hands, and she was directing the navigator and helmsman to correct the course. There are not many genius navigators, but there are still many people who know a little common sense of navigation. The reason why Olga is directing the route is because other people can't understand the text on it. Alchemy Island disappeared more than 100 years ago. The characters used on their island are very different from modern ones, and they are also a kind of ancient characters. The regional culture of the pirate world has a unified language, but there are also many dialects and local scripts on each island, and each island has its own culture. And these characters also have some similarities. The pattern on the treasure map belongs to a kind of ancient script. Although it is different from Alchemy's script, they are all pictographs. With her knowledge of the Alchemy script, Olga even managed to translate the script with a guess. There are several ways to write the word fennel, and it is not uncommon for the ancient script to be similar. If you can recognize half of it, 
you can roughly guess the pronunciation and meaning of the word. Combined with the context, although there will be differences, the general direction will not go wrong. The previous merchant took this thing as a gift, because they didn't know that kind of thing at all. Everything that belongs to ancient times is something that the world government does not want to spread. Al Chameleon Islands have disappeared, and there are more than one similar island, so many of those words have been lost, and only a few places specializing in history can interpret them. However, the ability to translate these words does not affect the viewing of charts. By comparing the positions of islands and currents, you can always find the route, but it is more convenient and labor.saving if you are literate. This thing, why do I look like a liar? Quinn held the map with a suspicious look. The reason he got on the boat was that he was an expert in treasure hunting. How to prove that he was an expert? Cut, uncle, you can't understand these words, how do you know it's fake, we're just taking a chance anyway, why don't you go and have a look? Little devil, you are still too young to know the dangers of this world. Among all the cadres, Ashier is the only one who will not have a conflict with Quinn. The two are very similar in many personalities, such as narcissism and blind self.confidence. Of course, Ashier can't beat Quinn, his the combat power is about the same as that of ordinary miscellaneous soldiers. It's not quite right to say that, it should be said that he is smaller than ordinary soldiers, he has not lost weight yet, and that figure cannot show any advantages in battle. In addition to his status as a trainee, Olga is very popular in the beast group. But what exactly is written on it? I don't quite understand it either, but the general meaning seems to be the great secret treasure of immortality. That's what it should mean, the great treasure of immortality. This sounds more like a lie. From time to time, there will be such rumors in the sea, such as golden apples and the like. Those are all rumors. Assi's pure gold is one of the ways to achieve this road, but there is no limit to pure gold. No. The immortal operation of the surgical fruit is the most reliable method known so far, but the specific situation is only known to those who are capable, or to those who have experienced immortal surgery. A lot of treasure maps have to be a strong gimmick, what to buy the world's treasure, the big secret of immortality, this kind of thing Quinn has seen before. But he just said that he didn't want to go back and be trained by Kaido now. The pirate ship with the banner of the beast sails on the sea. In the seas of the new world, the pirate flag is the best pass. If the strength of the pirate group is strong enough, as long as it is not in the territory of other pirates if you are provoked or encounter a stunned youth, you can basically live in peace. This is the tacit understanding between the big pirates. If they fight every day, it will not benefit the territory or themselves. Without touching the bottom line, many things can be discussed, such as the banana talks between Kaido and Charlotte Lingling. In this way, everyone gets what they need, and those who only rely on fighting to solve problems are the lowest level. Pirates After sailing for a period of time, Archaeus and others have approached the destination of the trip. At this time, the sky has been covered by clouds, but it is just clouds, and there is no sign of rain. If it is in the ordinary sea, the appearance of a large number of clouds almost means the arrival of heavy rain, but this is a new world, and all common sense of navigation will be broken here. At this time, Olga was calling for assistance from Ashier, because there were a few words she couldn't really guess what they meant. She was only eight years old before alchemy disappeared, and she did not learn all the words of alchemy. Some complex characters are not recognized. After. Came out, alchemy was gone, and Asier didn't continue to teach her those things, but learned new words with her. With the help of Asi, she finally figured out the meaning of the last sentence. Midnight's wings cut through the clouds, and the moonlight guides the final direction. That should be what it means. Midnight. Moonlight. Are we going to wait here until midnight? It should be. This treasure map has a fault. Although it marks the location of the last island, it only guides people to the nearby sea area. That's what it said after that. Then just wait, it's all here, 
it's not bad for such a night's work. Anchored and stopped the ship, and the beasts waited for the arrival of midnight. The thick clouds blocked the moonlight, but when midnight came, the sky was cracked, and the moonlight scattered in a straight line into the distance. You can still vaguely see that something seems to fly through the clouds, and it is they that cause such a gap in the clouds. No matter how many times I look at it, nature is really strange. Looking at this strange scene, Olga sighed. However, Quinn's focus was different from Olga's. He always felt that those clouds were a little strange, and they didn't seem to be normal clouds. At this time, there was a scream in the sky, and then a black shadow fell on the boat of the beasts. End of this chapter Chapter 87 Millennium Dragon You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 87 Millennium Dragon The shadow fell directly on the deck, startling the pirates beside him, but they calmed down quickly. There were two cadres on board, a reserve cadre and her partner, and Archaeus was here. The lineup gave them confidence in their hearts. A few pirates bravely walked over, and before they could scold them, there was a roar of beasts, and a pair of red pupils in the darkness revealed dangerous eyes. As the searchlight on the ship shone here, a strange creature appeared on the deck, with a green back and a white belly. The overall structure was similar to a western dragon, but with long hair all over its body, and its front claws were also combined with wings. In one body, the hind limbs are huge bird claws. The thick and long tail is spread across the deck, and the length of the body is roughly estimated to be 8 or 9 meters. However, it looks very weak now. A huge black arrow has penetrated its wings. It was this thing that caused it to fall. And there is an iron lock behind the black arrow. The end of the iron lock is connected to a heavy object. It seems that someone specially made it to capture it. This thing is a millennium dragon. As Quinn's biological knowledge, he quickly recognized the species of this thing, a special creature called Millennium Dragon, but the name is Millennium Dragon, and their appearance is more similar to the combination of Archaeopteryx and dinosaurs. The reason is called Millennium Dragons is because they live long enough. Big Brother Quinn, what is the Millennium Dragon? A legendary creature, it is rumored that the bones of this thing can give people immortality, but it is false. Why he knew, of course, because MADS had studied such rumors. The research on the bloodline factor involves all kinds of strange creatures. Although the Millennium Dragon is rare, as long as it is a species that exists in this world, the world government can always find some clues. The ideal cemetery and birthplace of a thousand-year-old dragon is the Dragon Island hidden under the deep sea of the East China Sea. This island only rises to the surface every thousand years, but not all thousand-year-old dragons can die here. The thousand-year-old dragon that died or was born outside also exists, and through simple research and experiments, it is natural to conclude that it is just fake news. Moreover, if this is true, then it is estimated that no 1000.year.old dragon will be seen in the outside world, and the people of the world government will not let this creature live outside. No matter how much manpower and material resources are spent, they will hunt and kill this race to collect keel and keep a small amount in their own hands. The so dot called secret of immortality is just a rumor. If the keel of a thousand dot year dot old dragon can really make an elixir of life, then it is very unreasonable that the thousand dot year dot old dragon will age and die. However, it turns out that some people still believe in this legend, otherwise they would not hunt and kill the millennium dragon. As for how he came to this conclusion, the scar on the millennium dragon has already explained everything and only humans or demi-humans can use this kind of thing. Quinn showed off his knowledge by doing science work to the people around him, but when he talked about some experiments, the injured Millennium Dragon roared at him, which made his already injured body surge. More blood came out. What is this guy doing, is he dying? It means, you bastard, you dare to hurt, it's kin, if you have the ability, you go over, it will take a bite, and it will kill you, um, probably, that's what it means. 
Elizabeth's intermittent voice sounded in Quinn's ears. As long as she studied for a while, Elizabeth would be able to communicate as freely as a human being. Adult millennium dragons can understand human speech, but they cannot speak human speech, and humans cannot understand their roars. But as we all know, all humans and terrestrial creatures other than demi-humans in the pirate world speak the same thing. This can be seen from the translation function of Chopper, whether it is a camel or a bird, even if it is a special kind of kung fu manatee. Creatures, he can understand. Blue, the capital of the seven waters, ordinary sea beasts, and Chopper can understand their words, but it seems that the fish can't understand them, and the fish and other animals probably do not use the same language. As for the sea kings, only each generation of sea kings and those who can hear everything can understand them. The language of this millennium dragon is the same as that of Elizabeth, so Elizabeth acts as the translator. Otherwise, only Archaeus on the ship could understand it. It got it wrong. I mean I have studied the materials sent by others. It is the first living thousand-year-old dragon I have ever seen. Quinn is not explaining to the Millennium Dragon, but explaining to Shayna that Shayna hates the so-called experiments of the world government, not only the experiments that happened to her and Abel at the time, but also the experiments on other races. The same is true. She wouldn't go near Quinn's lab, and Quinn wouldn't mention such a thing in front of her, but this time he got a little carried away, so he broke the tacit understanding between the two. Recently Shayna has been beside Archaeus every night, and she seems to have gained a lot of power, and she also has the idea of dot developing Quinn bowling, which makes Quinn have to guard. The Great Treasure of Immortality It seems that Olga's translation is correct. I think the direction of the treasure map is the island where this thousand-year-old dragon lives. Quinn began to change the subject, but the method of this transfer was very rigid and the effect was not obvious. Just when he had a headache, someone helped him, and a cannonball shot directly around the hull. The provocative spray was scattered around Archaeus, and the water soaked the deck next to Archaeus, and Quinn's eyes almost glowed when he saw all this. Master Archaeus. Someone dares to disturb your purity, unforgivable. I'll go and catch them. Quinn turned into a tropical dragon and soared into the air, rushing in the approximate direction, leaving only the pirates on board looking at each other in dismay. Does this dare to act a little more exaggerated? Shayna, go with him too, I don't think he is reliable. According to the order, Lord Holy Beast, I will deal with those who fired the cannon. He waved his wings to catch up with Quinn, who flew out ahead of time, while Archaeus walked to the Millennium Dragon. O.org Since this thing lived a long time, maybe they knew something about the past. The slate can appear in the belly of the Sea King, and it may appear in a thousand-year-old dragon's nest. The struggle just now was the last physical strength of the thousand-year-old dragon. At this time, it was already lying on the deck extremely weakly. End of this chapter. Chapter 88 Drop of Life You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 88 Water Drops of Life, What About the Ship Doctor, Take Out What's Inside It. Now that the Hundred Beasts Pirates have more than one ship doctor, although Quinn is still the person with the highest medical skills in the group, there is only one Quinn, and the Hundred Beasts Pirates are not a small pirate group like the Straw Hats. One cannot be too busy. Famous doctors are hard to find, but it is still easy to find some ordinary doctors. Their medical skills do not need to be very sophisticated, and they can deal with simple colds, fever, food poisoning and trauma. This is the most common situation on board. This, Lord Holy Beast, if you pull it out, it may die immediately. It cannot be pulled out directly by being penetrated by a sharp weapon, let alone these pirates, even if you watch a few more episodes of TV series, you will know this truth. The black arrow that runs through its body is as thick as an arm, and there are huge barbs on it. When the Millennium Dragon struggles in the air, the wound has been torn, and the wound is oozing blood. Although the amount of bleeding is decreasing now, it is because the hematopoietic rate of its internal organs can no longer keep up with the rate of bleeding. 
I know, you don't have to worry about other things, just pull out the things and prepare to suture the wound. Yes, I see. Drive ducks to the shelves. He has seen veterinarians forced to treat people before, but he was the first doctor who was forced to treat Millennium Dragons. Then a bigger problem arose, they kept cutting the black arrow. The arrow has a huge barb, and the tail of the arrow is connected with a thick and long iron cable. If you want to pull it out, you have to cut it off, but the black arrow is unknown, and they can't leave a trace. In the end, the water blade on Elizabeth's tail cut off the black arrow, and then Olga acted as an anesthesiologist. Zoroark's illusion ability is not just an ordinary illusion, it can not only deceive the capture of the camera, but also deceive the perception of the creature. She has imposed a false illusion on the Millennium Dragon that she will not feel pain. Then the two pirates work together to pull the black arrow out. The wound is very ferocious, and the broken internal organs and bone scum can still be seen. Even if he is not a veterinarian, he sentenced this thousand-year-old dragon to death. After that, a water mass flew out of Arceus's body and hit the Millennium Dragon just like that. Then a wave of water appeared on the deck, and the energy in the water droplets poured into the Millennium Dragon's body. Not only the Millennium Dragon, but even the small wounds on the pirates within the range were directly affected by this ripple. Bin cured life water drop, a new skill after obtaining the water drop tablet. Water.based skills, a few skills that can restore vitality to other allies, restore vitality, and improve the body's self.healing ability, but this ability can't do anything for broken limbs, unless the species already has this ability. The hole left by the black arrow is too big, so it still needs to be stitched. In the eyes of the ship doctor, the necrotic part of the Millennium Dragon's body seemed to be revived. Divine Power The magic power technique that Babanuki got shocked them, but the magic power technique is similar to a kind of cultivation method, which can be understood as the strengthening of Babanuki. This kind of divine power that pulls the Millennium Dragon back from the death line is even more powerful, even more so for a person who is proficient in medicine. The powerful healing power almost means that they have a chance of surviving in the future. Don't be in a daze, quickly sew up its wounds. Applying this realistic illusion is also more expensive for Olga, which is not only blocking vision, but also pain. Looking at the stunned ship doctor, she urged him, which made him react and started suturing the wound in a hurry. The Millennium Dragon does not have hard scales, which is good news, otherwise the needles and threads prepared for humans in his medical kit may not be useful. Now, as long as the excess hair is shaved, the wound can be sutured. But this was done by the cook on the ship, because his shaving speed was too slow, and the Millennium Dragon's hair was relatively tough. With the help of the chef and the doctor, the wound of the Millennium Dragon was treated. When Olga's illusion was lifted, the Millennium Dragon had recovered its vitality. Although the wound still hurts, it is an acceptable level for it. It didn't seem to figure out what was going on, and looked at his bald belly with a confused look. How are you feeling? Roar, yes, that's good, have you ever seen something like this? Roar, next is the communication between Arceus and the Millennium Dragon, but none of the people present except Elizabeth can understand what the Millennium Dragon is saying. Elizabeth, what is that dragon talking about? It said that it was only 200 years old, and many things are not clear, but it can, take us home, and ask its father, its father has lived for more than 600 years, and it is still thinking. Olga's vision didn't block some things either. It knew that Arceus saved it, but it didn't see the slate that Arceus wanted, and it never left the neighborhood after it was born. But its father flew over from another sea area. It should know some news. It felt the kindness of Arceus, so it was willing to take him home to have a look. The Millennium Dragon just doesn't know how to speak, it's not a fool. It can see who is talking on this ship. If it is a human, it may not believe the other party, even if the other party saves itself. But the appearance of Arceus made it choose trust, especially the breath exuded by the other party in the more magical power, which also deepened his trust. 
Roar, it said it was hungry and asked us if we had anything to eat. This was conveyed by Elizabeth on behalf of the chef. After being instructed by Archaeus, the cook had a new job. But this time the job is very simple, because the Millennium Dragon only needs raw fish. On the other side, Quinn is thanking those who saved him from the sea with actions, such as strafing the deck with a seed machine gun. The sea shelling means a declaration of war, and since they have fired, the battle is the only result. Besides, this is the reason why he came here, it would be troublesome if he did nothing. There are countless organizations scattered on the sea, and the best way to identify them is to look at the flag, but the logo on the ship in front of Quinn is very special. On the sails, there is neither the pirate skull flag, nor the world government's cross symbol, nor the navy's seagull flag, but a strange scalpel and spherical symbol. For Quinn, this pattern is not unfamiliar, they are one of the most notorious groups in the sea. The Organ Trafficking and Assassination Group End of this chapter Chapter 89 You don't even know how my arrogance comes from you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 89 You have no idea how my domineering came from Organ Trafficking and Assassination Group, a group mainly active in the Great Root, they can be seen in the first half of the Paradise or the second half of the New World. It means that members of their organization occasionally appear in the Four Seas, which is one of the components of the underground world. Their notoriety is even stronger than that of pirates. Pirates still have rules to abide by, and the territory of big pirates also has its own system, but this group of people is completely indiscriminate assassination. Dot as the name suggests, the business of organ trafficking and assassination groups is human organs, and the source of organs is assassination. They will hunt the selected targets, sell their organs, fall into the hands of the traffickers, and they will not die for a while, but this group of people will directly dismember the target. Assassination is to protect the integrity of the organs to the greatest extent, and there is a market where there is demand. Those wealthy nobles need transplants when they get sick. Some people do not choose mechanical products, but want human organs. In order to match the right model, the group may hunt countless targets to make their own deals. They also hunt powerful people or celebrities whose organs can be sold for higher prices. And it was them who just hunted the Millennium Dragon. The keel is a part of the Millennium Dragon's body. As an organ trafficking assassination group, hunting the Millennium Dragon is not beyond their scope of business. And their purpose is naturally to get more money. Although many people know that the keel of the Millennium Dragon can make people immortal is just a rumor, but there are also many people who believe this, the temptation of longevity is too great. As a liar, they don't need to be smart, they just need someone stupider than them. They like this kind of cute and rich buyer the most, this kind of stupid is very cute in their eyes. Which is the richest and often stupid group in this world? The answer is the Tianlong people. Although there are very few good people and some capable people in the group of Tianlong people, there are more people like Charles Ross. Organ trafficking and assassination group has plenty of eyeliner in the underground black market in order to have business. They know that there are Tianlong people who buy the keel of the Millennium Dragon at a very high price. And in order to prove that this is the keel of the thousand-year-old dragon, the complete thousand-year-old dragon must be sent there. This group of people has been tracking these thousand-year-old dragons for nearly a year according to various information. The dragon fell on the ship of the Beast Pirates. Due to the angle problem, they caught up with the Beast Pirates' ship from behind, and they didn't see the flag at all, so they chose to shoot directly. But even if they see the flag, they may not stop. This organization has existed for a long time, causing some members of the organization to be blindly confident. If the original timeline was developed normally, this organization would even dare to attack the aunt and her children at the big MOM tea party, plus those in the dark world. Big Mom's tea party is the most important thing for Charlotte Lingling, and when she holds the tea party, all the children and cadres will basically come back. Provoking Big M.O.M. at this time means directly declaring war on the entire Big M.O.M. pirate group. 
it is not surprising that such people do reckless things, and now they are paying the price. Seed machine gun, flying leaf knife, flying leaf storm, Quinn has completely filled his firepower. Because of the transformation, in addition to the position of the mouth, Quinn's tail, mechanical hands, and even the big braid at the back of the head can also release attacks. Quinn has transformed into an air combat fortress. Mumhaha, die, bastards, this is the price to pay for provocation. Under his intense firepower, there were no living members on the deck at all, only sharp blades and countless bullet scars. On the deck, continue to start destroying. This time he controlled his mouth and didn't say anything he shouldn't have said. He already felt the eyes of Shayna behind him. This is the ability he has trained after the plantation's misunderstanding, but it can be seen in the action. Some resentment. Get out for me. What are you hiding? He didn't enter the cabin, but bombarded the deck with energy outside. He didn't know what the structure of the ship was, and it was not good for him to rush into a small place. It was night now, and the release of the sunshine sun was slower than during the day, so he did not use the more powerful sunshine flame, but just as he continued to attack indiscriminately, all the lights on the deck suddenly went out. It seems that he did not destroy the wiring, but someone deliberately cut off the power supply. Then several strong lights appeared, which seemed to be high dot power searchlights, and beams of light shot at Quinn's face, followed by the sound of noisy footsteps. Although I don't know who you are, we will accept your organs. I like liver, but this fat pig may have a fatty liver. It doesn't matter, I want his eyes, I hope he won't be blinded. He should be able to make up for our loss this time. Several iron cables were wrapped around Quinn's neck. In the human dot beast form, Quinn's neck was in the form of a tropical dragon. In their opinion, this neck was his weakness. The sound of breaking the air sounded, and even if he couldn't see it, he knew these people. He was slashing at his neck with a knife. Followed, but the result was not what they expected, Quinn's neck was unscathed by their slash. How is it possible, this is a domineering attack attached. Domineering. You guys are too embarrassed to call him domineering. Referring to this, Quinn seemed to be blown away, grabbing the attackers on both sides with one hand. Compared to the arrogance tempered by Lao Tzu who has endured countless hardships, what are you guys? Both hands pressed down, the huge weight plus inertia, directly pressed their heads under the deck, then grabbed the chain around their necks and broke it directly. And are you all idiots? I'm wearing sunglasses, what's the use of this light? Stroking the glasses on his face, Quinn showed a disdainful smile. Got new ideas. He took out from his body and took out a purple fruit. This fruit has only characteristics and is highly poisonous. Then the fruit disappeared into Quinn's hand, and there was a green wave in his hand. I don't usually have the opportunity to use this ability, let's see the new plague bomb born after the combination of Lao Tzu's ability and technology. The grace of nature, which will have different effects depending on the fruit that it carries, Quinn developed this new ability after injecting toxins into the fruit. End of this chapter. Chapter 90. Burnout You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 90 Burning Out MADS People would come together to work on the same things, like lineage factors. In this regard, Quinn, Gage, and Vega Punk have their own research directions, but they all revolve around the bloodline factor. In addition, they also have their own research priorities, and Quinn is best at researching the application of viruses to weapons in addition to human modification. He called his research results a plague bomb. Depending on the type of virus, the model of the plague bomb is also different, and this model is called vegetative by him. Inject the poison into the fruit and carry it with you, and then release it with the skill of nature's grace as the source. Compared with bullets or shells, the energy attack of nature's grace is more difficult to avoid. The vegetative is the combination with the best effect after his attempt. Those affected by his natural grace will gradually lose control over the body when they are conscious. If there is no antidote, they will fall into coma. 
After a period of time, he will become a real vegetative person, which is the result of his experiments in the defeated thorn-headed pirates. And this release method has another advantage, as long as a fruit is used as a medium, he can quickly make an antidote. The attack of the grace of nature quickly spread to the whole ship, and the people in the cabin also noticed something wrong and took out gas masks one after another. They often use a wide range of anesthetic gas in their usual activities. The price of the organs of the dead is not as good as that of the living. In pursuit of better quality, they usually choose to capture them. If you kill the opponent, you must quickly take out what you need, release the anesthetic gas first, and then fight. This is their inherent way of action. But the grace of nature is not a gas, but a special kind of energy. Even if the gas mask filters the air, their bodies are still in contact with the grace of nature, but within a minute, their bodies begin to stiffen and fall one by one. In the cabin. And Quinn was counting the seconds on the deck. After three minutes more than the effective time, he walked towards the direction of the cabin, but a dark shadow suddenly fell in front of him. Hey, what are you doing? Dot, the fish that slipped through the net, I think your armed color seems to be solid, but you are still close to seeing it. The shadow was thrown down by Shayna, and he was also a member of the organ trafficking and assassination group. He just saw that the situation was not good. Hiding in the watchtower. Quinn's grace of nature aimed at the lower cabin, so he ignored that corner. Grace of nature was not a gas, and would not float upward for no reason. But he avoided Quinn, not Shayna. You're quite light, at this time, Quinn's armed color is stronger than his knowledge color. This is related to his training method. Whether it is armed color or knowledge color, the best way to cultivate is to break through in battle. In addition, it is being beaten, but it is also a beating. The beating of the armed color is different from the beating of the seen color. The training of the armed color cannot be avoided, and you must improve your defense, while the knowledgeable color is to predict the opponent's attack and avoid the upcoming attack. But Quinn's sparring staff are some supermodels, which caused him to be unable to avoid the opponent's attack. Over time, in order not to really become a ball, he had to practice a lot of armed colors, which finally led to this result. But why did you come? Master Holy Beast is afraid that you will lose the chain, so let me come over and have a look, and go back when it's over. Wait, don't worry, these guys should have a lot of loot on board, it would be a pity not to. After saying that, Quinn was going to scavenge the spoils, but he came up not long after he went down. That. There's something I should show you. I'm not interested in this kind of stuff, hurry up. No, it's not very easy to say about this thing, you'd better come down and see for yourself. With Quinn's repeated insistence, Shayna followed him down. The environment in the cabin of this ship was still very good. It could be seen that the sanitation was very clean, and there was a smell of disinfectant. There are large petri dishes in several cabins, and objects similar to organs are soaked in unknown liquids. These are the warehouses of organ trafficking and assassination groups, and their goods are stored in them. The lower level is the bloodier slaughter room and prison, but Quinn did not intend to continue, but pointed to the wall in front, on which hung a pair of black-winged specimens. Dot. It's this thing, if I read it right, this thing should be, Quinn took two steps back before finishing his words. The person who knows Shayna best can rank in the top three. As for Shayna's anger, he was not boasting. He dared to say that Archaeus did not understand him. Now Shayna's appearance is obviously on the verge of rage, but she is forcibly enduring. Find me a way to detoxify him, I have something to ask. Black wing specimens are not common. Shayna doesn't know who the owner of the pair of wings is, but she can see that it is of the same race. Quinn can recognize it because he knows the true race of Shayna and Jin. Also helped them deal with their wounds, so I knew some characteristics of the Lunalia tribe, and I recognized them. The wings of the Lunaria clan are part of the body, and the wings that appear here also mean a blood debt. Quinn didn't want to describe what happened after. 
he found that women were much more terrifying than men when they were crazy. He called Jean a pervert who liked torture, but compared to Shana just now, Quinn's torture was simply a good baby behavior. There is nothing special about it. The pair of wings is something they got decades ago. They just thought it looked good, so they put it on the boat as a decoration. There is such a pair of wings in the base of the new world. The source is the world. Government auctions. Although they are an organ trafficking and assassination group, they also have their own transactions with the world government. And the source of this pair of wings is the limbs left after the death of some Lunalia tribesmen, which were used and sold by some officials of the world government. The last pair of wings was burned by Shana with the flames of the Lunaria tribe. Their funeral was cremation, and only their own flames could burn them completely. In order to hunt the Millennium Dragon, there are no people outside the organ trafficking and assassination group on this ship, but some goods are stored, because they may encounter customers at any time, this is for sale, and this is also convenient for Shana. Hot flames condensed in the mouth, and the bursting flames spit out. burned out, and the whole ship was incinerated in the fire, including members of the organ trafficking assassination group on board. End of this chapter